Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. In this video we shall be discussing mast cell membrane stabilizers from the Department of Clinical Pharmacology. Alright, so mast cell stabilizers are basically drugs that limit the flux of calcium across the mast cell membrane, thus preventing degranulation and release of vasoactive substances. Medications in this group include sodium chromoglycate, 4%, um, uh, 0.1%, lodoxamide, tromethamine, and the newer mast cell stabilizers that are uh, pemurolase potassium, 0.1%, and uh, nitochromyl sodium, 2%. Um, given that these medications inhibit the release of histamine rather than block histamine receptors, they are better at preventing than treating allergic signs and symptoms. Their effects may not be seen until 2 to 5 days after initiation of therapy, while their maximum benefit is achieved 15 days after initiation of therapy. So the image in the bottom right corner basically just explains what indeed mast cell stabilizers are and their site of action. Um. So in other words, mast cell stabilizers are common medications used to prevent or control certain allergic disorders. They block mast cell degranulation, stabilizing the cell and thereby preventing the release of histamine, interleukins and related mediators. One suspected pharmacodynamic mechanism is the blocking of Ig-regulated calcium channels. Without intracellular calcium, the histamine vesicles cannot fuse to the membrane and therefore degranulate. As inhalers, they are used to treat asthma, as nasal sprays to treat hay fever, and as eye drops for allergic conjunctivitis. Finally, in oral forms, they are used to treat rare conditions of mastocytosis. All right, so when um, classifying mast cell membrane stabilizing drugs, we classify them according to their site of action. Let's begin by discussing local acting membrane stabilizing drugs. So, for example, those ones that are used in bronchial asthma, that is chromoglycic acid, um, international name chromoglycic acid, with the commercial name being Intol, and it can be used as a result for inhalation, powder for inhalation in capsules of 20 mg or um, infrarol as powder for inhalation in capsules of 20 mg and finally it can be given as chromohexal which is a solution for inhalation of 20 mg. Another local acting membrane stabilizing drug is nitochromyl sodium that can also be used in bronchial asthma. So chromoglycic acid can also be used in allergic rhinitis as nasal drops of 2% in a bottle of 5 ml, um, also as nasal aerosol sprays. Chromoglycic acid can also be used in allergic conjunctivitis in eye drops of 2% in a bottle of 5 ml. And uh, another short, another local acting membrane stabilizer that is worth the mention is lodoxamide. Um, with the commercial name of alomide, which also comes in eye drops of 0.1%. So for systemic membrane stabilizers with antihistamine effect, catoltifen is the main one, which comes in tablets, syrups, and capsules. So for mechanism of action and pharmacological effects, it is believed that catoltifen and chromons exert their action as agonists of the corresponding cell receptors. These drugs are known to block the entry of chlorine ions into the mast cells, thereby preventing the entry of calcium ions into the cell, ensuring the degranulation of these cells. And due to this membrane stabilizing effect, the release of histamine and other mediators is blocked. And these drugs have a suppressive effect on other cells involved in allergic inflammation. Thus, the pharmacological effects of these drugs are as follows. Suppressing the release of mast cell mediators under the action of allergens and nonspecific non irritants, um, reduction of mucosopermeability, inhibition of the activity of eosinophils, macrophages, neutrophils, and platelets, blockade of both the early and late phase 
uh, late phases of allergic response, as well as reducing the sensitivity of afferent nerve fibers and blockade of reflex bronchoconstriction. Furthermore, the membrane stabilizing effect of chromoglycic acid and natochromyl sodium also extends to processes not related to allergies. For example, chromoglycic acid inhibits cough caused by angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, and catoltifen, in addition to the membrane stabilizing effect, has an antihistamine effect by blocking H1 receptors. And um, in addition, it is a calcium antagonist. It eliminates the beta adrenal receptor tachyphylaxis. Like chromons, catotifen reduces the airway hyperactivity associated with platelet activating factor or exposure to allergens and inhibits the accumulation of eosinophils in the airways. The therapeutic effect of catotifen develops slowly within one to two months. Okay, now let's get into pharmacokinetics. So chromons are not absorbed from the mucous membrane of the nose. After inhalation of chromoglycic acid or natochromal sodium, from 8 to 15% of the dose is absorbed from the respiratory tract into the circulatory system. Chromons bind reversibly to plasma proteins and are not metabolized and do not accumulate. From systemic blood flow, chromoglycic acid is excreted and changed through urine and bile, while natochromal sodium is excreted in urine, um, 70% of it in urine and 30% of it in feces. Ketotifen is almost completely absorbed when taken orally. Its bioavailability is 50%, with its uh, Tmax being the half-life of 2 to 4 hours. It binds to plasma protein by 75% and it is excreted mainly in urine. Moving on to indications of mast cell membrane stabilizers. Local membrane stabilizers are indicated for prevention of um, angioedema, angioedema uh, topic bronchial asthma, as well as bronchospasm caused by exercise, inhalation of cold air, forthcoming contact with a non allergen, and any given pollutant. And mast cell membrane stabilizers are contraindicated. Um, with attacks of asthma, asthmatic status, the need for intensive bronchodilation treatment, as well as uh, hypersensitivity to the ingredients of the drugs. Chromoglycic acid is contraindicated in children under 5 years old. Metochromyl sodium is contraindicated in children under 2 years old and uh, lodoxamide in children under 4 years old. When prescribing chromons to pregnant women, the physician should take uh, caution by evaluating the balance of risks and benefits in each specific cases. However, if prior to pregnancy, asthma was successfully controlled by the use of chromons and control of the disease remains effective during pregnancy, then there is no need to change the therapeutic regime. Ketotifen is contraindicated in cases of hypersensitivity to the drugs in the first trimester of pregnancy and when breastfeeding. Side effects due to mechanical irritation of the upper respiratory tract during inhalation into the bronchi are cough and uh, short-term effects of bronchospasms. In some other cases, there is pronounced bronchospasm with a decrease in respiratory function. Side effects of ketotifen are drowsiness, dry mouth, slight dizziness, slow reaction rate, which often disappears after four to seven days of treatment, and in rare cases, there is increased appetite, weight gain, dysuria, and cystitis. However, there is a potentiation effect when taking um, chromoglycic acid with oral and inhaled forms of beta adrenomimetics oral and inhaled forms of glucocorticoids, theophylline and other methyls and tiny derivatives, as well as histamine 1 receptor blockers. A solution of chromoglycic acid for inhalation should not be combined with preparations of bromohexin and ambroxol. Catotifen, on the other hand, enhances the action of sedatives and hypnotic drugs, H1 blockers, as well as alcohol. When taking ketotifen simultaneously with oral hypoglycemic drugs, a reversible decrease in the number of platelets is noted. Alright, thank you for watching this tutorial. If you're new to this channel, kindly subscribe 
and leave me a comment if you have any contributions and any suggestions of what topic I might cover next. And uh, until next time, thank you.